Hi, welcome to this short video on deploying Lightspeed's cluster on AWS using the AWS Marketplace. My name is Roy Diel and I'm a solution engineer here in Lightspeed Labs. In this demo, we'll use the AWS Marketplace to deploy a Lightspeed cluster, connect to the cluster, add our JOT token to the LBSLI command, and then create volumes and connect them to a client. Let's begin. We'll get started by going into the AWS Marketplace and searching for a Lightbeats. Here we have two options. Let's choose the Lightbeats Cloud Block Storage and pick that up. On this page, we have information about the product and the ability to subscribe. Let's hit subscribe. We'll get and accept the terms and condition. We can see the different instances that we can deploy and we'll accept the terms. And now we'll wait for the subscription to pass through. This should take a minute or two. And while this is done, we can continue to configure the deployment. We'll hit configure. We have the fulfillment option, what software version we have to choose, which region we want to use, and some additional information. We'll hit continue to launch. And we'll choose the how do we want to launch it. At the moment, we are using CloudFormation. Once we've launched this, we get into create stack through CloudFormation. So the YAML file is pre-filled here. We'll hit next. We'll give the stack a name. And here we'll add additional information. Uh, the region, we'll add a uh, connectivity cider IP address. The amount of Lightbeats clusters instances that we want to deploy. What is the instance type? Uh, we need to choose a key pair. And a region. Also, we need to add a bucket name for the Lightbeats configuration to be stored at. So I'll add the bucket name. And the final setting is creating the network range for the VPC. I'll hit next. I have an option here to set up roles and tags and so on. I'm going to skip this for now. I can review the information that I've created and I need to go to the bottom, acknowledge the creation of resources and hit create stack. Now I'll go into my stacks and I'll see that CloudFormation is starting to create Lightbeats with a predefined stack. So if I'll refresh, I'll see that it will start creating the network and then it will create the EC2 instances for Lightbeats, get it all together and bring it up. In the meanwhile, while this is running, I'm gonna go and create a small client so I'll be able to access this later. I'll go to EC2. And I'll launch a new instance here. I will choose an AMI that I already have. Micro will be good for this sake of test. So I'll choose the right network and I'll choose the right subnet. Uh, I can define if I want to have a public IP address. Let's enable this. Uh, in this case, and see that the rest of the settings are fine. We'll hit next, we'll add storage. It doesn't matter, this is local storage. Just choose the default. We can add tags to it. Uh, and then we do have to choose the right security group, so we'll be able to access that. I'll review, launch, and choose the right key again. and hit launch instance. So my instance is coming up. Let me go back to the cloud formation to see what's going on, what's the status. I see that the network creation is completed. It's now continued to create. And in about 15 minutes, we're gonna have a working cluster. Now we can see it starts to create the EC2 instances and deploy the Lightbeats cluster. If we'll go to EC2, 
we'll see that we'll have new devices that are initializing and we'll be able to see them in a few minutes. We can also see the instance that is just created, still initializing. So here are my three new instances for Lightbits being created. Okay, while this is initializing, let's connect to the instance that I've just created and start preparing it to connect to Lightbits. So we can see that we have the NVMe TCP enabled on this client. And if we'll do NVMe list, we'll be able to see that there's nothing here at the moment. LSBLK will also show us that there's only one local device. There are no devices mounted. Let's go back to see what's going on with our stack. Still creating the EC2 instances, we'll be able to see that on the EC2, it's still initializing one of the nodes and the other two have passed. Once all three are up, it will start configuring light bits. Now that we see that everything in the stack has been completed, we can go and log into one of the nodes of the Lightbits cluster. Let's go to the EC2 instances. Let's just choose one of those nodes. And we can use Session Manager in this case to connect. So the first thing that we want, we want to do is go and get the JOT in order to put it in the LBCLI. Now we'll edit the LBCLI YAML file. And at the end here, we'll add jot, colon, and paste what we've copied, the jot. We just have to be careful to see that it's actually one line. After we did it, we can save this file and get out and do LBCLI list nodes. If the JOT have been inserted properly, we should be able to see the three active nodes that we have on the Lightbits cluster. Let's capture one of the NVMe endpoint devices for later usage. And now let's create our first volume to attach. We'll do that by doing LBCLI create volume minus minus project name equals default minus minus name equals vol1 minus minus ACL for the access control list. Let's call it client1 minus minus size equals, this is thin provision, let's do one bytes <laughs> minus minus compression equals true and lastly minus minus replica count equals three for three copies this have immediately created one volume let's just quickly create another volume let's call it volume two and change the size for two terabytes now that we've completed this on the lightbase cluster let's go back to our client and connect that into Lightspeeds. I have a service called Discovery Client. 
that I can use in order to connect. And the syntax is connect all minus T TCP for NVMe over TCP minus A and the IP that I previously copied minus Q with the ACL, which was client one and minus P for persistent. Once I run this, of course, I forgot to head to do at the beginning. Once I've done this, the client will connect via NVMe TCP over the network to the cluster. And if I'll run NVMe list now, I see that I have those volumes that were created available here on the client. I hope you enjoyed this short video tutorial. For more information, please visit www.lightbeatslabs.com. Please refer to the administration guide on our website for more information.